day one, Robin Leslie's French 25 days of Advent. We're leaving this very cozy little house on the Multnomah campus and heading back to France. Alarm went at 5.30 this morning and uh, this is what we're taking, just carry-ons. Uh, I think two out of our four carry-ons are all stuff for the Chateau and the little ones are, are, uh, are clothes. Uh, our daughter is graciously woken up to take us and here we go. All right, 18 hours later, here we are in Paris. That's one good boy right there. He's a good boy. He had to he had to wait how long to go to the bathroom? Probably 15 hours. He was a really good boy. Now he's having a nice drink and he's gonna have a good next month. You know, it's interesting. Uh, our first flight, we got there at 6.30 and then uh, 6.30 and then uh, for our 9.15 flight. But then of course uh, the flight, there was fog and so it was two hours late. Now we've flown quite a bit and so we've learned a few things and the first thing you learn is you've got to only have one connection if you have to have a connection and then secondly um, you want at least two or three hours you don't want like a short connection so we had two and a half hours and it's a good thing because we were two hours late so then uh, we pulled up right and got onto the second flight the other thing that's super interesting is that uh, you learn a lot about yourself when things go wrong and or about the people around you in line all right, made it to the R E R, the R E R, the R E R train station, and now we have to take the train through uh, Paris, about an hour, uh, the R E R B to a Massey Palace. So now, um, so yeah, we're probably hour 18, and it'll be 19 by the time we get there. Then the next question is, will we find our car? Uh, Nathan and Sarah, uh, of course, have been staying in our house, and so they took the car to Paris a couple weeks ago and parked it in the garage. We're hoping it'll still be there. We're hoping it'll start and we can find it. And uh, so we'll take this train ride and hopefully find the car and then drive three hours to our house. Always an adventure, but honestly less of an adventure than sometimes because this time we didn't have to worry about COVID at all. Um, you know, we knew we were gonna get into the country and it was just kind of, you know, live with being on a plane for a long time. It's gonna be fun to see what the house is looking like too. All right, the great thing about Massey is this bakery is right next door. So we're gonna grab a little bit of lunch. It's good. Oh, there we go, that's what you need. Stay awake while you're driving, a little espresso, pan au chocolat, boisson. Staying awake. So yeah, we were uh, we were sitting at the, after, you know, at the airport this morning and uh, they were announcing that you know, the flights are delayed two hours. Of course, Thanksgiving weekend. So there's college students that are gonna miss their connections and not get home for Thanksgiving. And it was really sad. One of the little girls was crying. And, and then there's a lot of people that were mad. And there's a family that was six that was going to Cancun. And it was fascinating to listen to the different people talk and how they express frustration. You can really learn a lot about your character when things don't go the way you want it to. It reminds me of a book that I read. Um, it was actually a book that I, I used at teaching a class called um, Human Growth and Development. I got the book from my friend, Dr. Steve Patty. It's an amazing book. It's uh, called Shantung Compound. And it's, it's a true historical, it's a biography, autobiography, written by a guy named Langdon Gilkey. And it was his experience in a Japanese concentration camp during World War II. And the sub the so Shantung Compound is the name of the camp they were all interned at. It wasn't like a Nazi camp, it wasn't like a death camp. So people weren't getting killed. Basically the Japanese rounded up 2000 Westerners and put them all in this camp because they didn't want them spying or anything. Um, and they basically gave them food, a little bit of food every day and, and there wasn't enough room and there wasn't enough food and they had to create their own society with their own rules, but they didn't really have a system of law or any outside force. They had started to make their own. So it's a little bit Lord of the Flies. It's a little bit, um, apocalyptic it's just super interesting now the tagline of the book is um, people under pressure or observing people under pressure and so this whole time he's trying to uh, he's trying to come up with a couple really interesting questions like for one of them he's asking what's the place of religion in society like does is Christianity needed is religion needed and there's a bunch of religious people in the camp some of the missionaries some of them Catholic priests and, and some of them do well and some of them do badly and, and there's a lot of a lot about moral reasoning 
about one of the other taglines of the book is even saints will act like sinners if they miss their customary dinners and uh so people are are stuck in these terrible situations and the you know the bathroom situation is really bad and he finds that a lot of people will like make excuses to, you know, they'll make moral reasoning excuses so that they can advance themselves and so so even like some of the Christian guys would say stuff like, well, I, you know, we don't want to share our room. He's, everybody's got to cram in. And so they're all crowded. Some of them are like, well, I don't want to share a room because I got to work on my sermon, you know, or, uh, you know, God doesn't want me to be nice to people. Or even um, uh, some of the people were like, we don't want those people staying with our kids. And, and, and so a fascinating, fascinating book. Give it a read. But uh, it was it was interesting to watch that this morning when you saw different people dealing with the stress and frustration of things not going their way. Kind of a red flag, you can kind of tell a lot about your character. So always a good character test when things go badly. And hopefully we don't have one in a couple seconds when we go to find our car. So this is the Massey train station. And right next to it, big huge Hilton. And honestly, a pretty nice hotel. And sometimes you get rooms for hundred bucks, which in Paris, not bad. For us in Europe, usually $50 is a cheap hotel and uh, $100 if it's nicer. This bakery was fantastic too. So we enjoyed this quite a bit. So now we're gonna go back here and see the parkade is all underground and we'll see if we can find our car. Yes, success. Found the car. Will it open? Will it open? Yes, it did open. Woo! All right, here we are, hour 24. Almost there. All right, what are you thinking, Beth? Oh, it's good to be back. It is good to be back. The house is there. Dog's going out of his skin. He's getting so excited. He's really excited. People are on the front. I guess so. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Let's see if our remote still works. Ah, there we go, the Chateau de Le Griffin. Let's see. Oh. Yes, the remote does work. Oh. We'll go through the gate and then we'll let somebody have a run. Mm -hmm. And he will be quite excited. Okay, let's let him run. Here we go, Mr. Bubs. Open the door, let the Bubs run. You don't have to get out, just the Bubs. Mr. Bubs, here he goes. Look at this. There he goes. He's going around the back. Is he gonna come around the front? <laughs> Mr. Bubs has a good life here. He has a good life. All right, here we are walking around the yard. Look at that, stuff's grown. The grass, the big trees. Look at that. House is still here. Come around the back. Take a look. Boy, it's so much greener. The green all came back, which is good. And look at this, how the gravel is grown in. Man, oh man. Must have been a ton of rain. That has not looked like that for a long time. All right, there it is. Beauty, beauty. Hey, everybody. All right, it's the end of the day. It is, what is it? It's almost 4 o'clock, I'm calling it. It's <laughs> 3.30. And that was, I don't know, it's probably been 30 hours since we've been up, something like that. I'm ready to go to sleep. I'm trying to wait until the sun goes down. We have done a walk through the house and lots to talk about, and it's it's generally pretty good. And uh, maybe we'll save that for day two. Leslie and I can walk around and talk about what we discovered. Always an adventure. Oh, this is great too. Um, we have a great new food challenge this year. Uh, and it's an idea that came to me from one of our friends, one of our board member friends. And I'm going to tell you about it tomorrow, but it's fantastic. Remember last year we did $100 for 20, 21 days for $100, just me. And it was good. But this year, a better idea. So thanks for joining us for day one. And we'll see you tomorrow.